The Sea Venture, her decks lined with QE2 passengers, was welcomed into Hamilton Harbour, Bermuda, with flags dipped in tribute. The Sea Venture then woke up the whole of Bermuda with long blasts on her siren. For the QE2's 1,600 passengers, it was the end of an uncomfortable adventure, four days adrift, much of the time without hot food, water and lights. They had been packed into the sea venture, sleeping in the crew's quarters, bars and ballrooms. But their spirits were high, encouraged by liberal hospitality from Cunard and by a steel band playing the voice of spring. The first 800 passengers to be taken off were old age pensioners, but also on board were American footballers and 23 young British people who worked in the QE2's casino. Have you ever tried what sort of trip you've had? Oh, I think it was wonderful. It really was. It was an uh, experience, but everybody did their utmost to uh, help us uh, get through it, and they did it very nicely. Did you get worried at all? Well, of course, it was very unusual, I'll say that. I slept out on the deck one night. But we survived. Everybody treated us very well. The crews of both ships tried to take the best care of us that they could. We didn't get anywhere. We were a wonderful drive. <laughs> what, what were conditions like on board for you? Pretty bad. I think everybody made the best of it, but we didn't have any, any water most of the time. No air conditioning, uh, no lights, no ice for the drinks. Um, the sanitary conditions were pretty bad. You couldn't flush the toilets. So there was no water to wash with. We cleaned our teeth with vodka and gin and anything else that we could find. Before they left, they were given a cheque, some for up to £350 as a refund. The crippled QE2 is going to cost Cunard half a million pounds, including the charter of the Sea Venture and the aircraft. This is A.L. Payne. This is Payne.